Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your last lesson in exponents and thirds. In this lesson we're going to be looking at solving some simple third equations. Right, so the best thing is just to practice these to get to grips with them. So let's look at the first example. It says root 3x minus 12 equals 0. So with any type of equation when we're solving for x we try and get everything that is not the x onto the other side of the equal sign. So what we've got then is we're going to have root 3x is equal to 12. Now this square root is a bit of a bummer so what we're going to do is we want to get rid of it but what we need to realize is this is the same thing as 3x all to the half is equal to 12 and what we should have learnt from the last couple of lessons is if we got a to the half and we square it we end up with a, that is a to the half, times by 2 over 1, because you times across the brackets, and you end up with a. Right, so we are going to get rid of this half by squaring this whole term. So we got 3x to the half squared. But as usual, what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. You can't just square the left hand side and leave the right hand side hanging. You have to square it as well. So that becomes square, 12 squared. So then we've got 3x, and these cancel, just like it does over there, is equal to 12 squared. And 12 squared, I'm really hoping you know, is 144. Otherwise, use your calculator. And now we need to get the x by itself. So what do we do? We divide both sides by 3. So x is going to be 3 goes into 14 twice, remainder 2, so it's going to be 26. Okay, right, not too tricky here. Let's try another example. This time we've got root x minus 2 is equal to 3. Now before we get any numbers onto the other side, what do we have to do? We have to get rid of the square root. So again, what are we going to do? We are just going to square both sides. Right, so if we square both sides, this square root sign goes away and you're left with x minus 2 is equal to 3 squared which is 9 and then we just have to take the x2 onto the other side and we get x is equal to 11. Okay, that's very simple. Right, next one. Okay, here we start getting a little bit trickier and now we start having to check our solutions and I'll show you why in a second. So we've got root 2x plus 40 minus x is equal to minus 4. So again, what we're going to do this time is we're going to get everything that's not in the square root onto the other side. So we're going to go 2x plus 40 is equal to, when we take it across it becomes a plus, x minus 4. And now to get rid of the square root, again, what are we going to do? We're going to square both sides, okay? So if we do that, we end up with, um, I'm squaring this and I'm squaring this. Okay, so I end up with 2x plus 40 is equal to x minus 4 squared. And I normally just do the little pattern, but I'm going to show you how to do this in case you guys are struggling. So this becomes x minus 4, x minus 4, and I'll show you the slow way and then I'll teach you the quick way as well just in case. So the normal way of doing this, if you struggle, is always to do it just as you would any other type of binomial. So you go x times x is x squared, x times minus 4 is minus 4x, minus 4 times x is minus 4x and minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16 which becomes x squared minus 8x plus 16. But if you look here you can see this little pattern. Do you see that x squared is just x squared? Okay so it's the first term squared. 16 plus 16 is minus 4 squared so in other words it's the last term squared and then this middle term is basically x times minus 4 times 2. So it becomes double that. So if you have a squaring of a perfect bracket, we can just go, well, this is x squared. We go x times minus 4 is minus 4x. We double it, becomes minus 8x. And minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16. But grade 11s, if you find this tricky and you're going to make silly mistakes, and especially lots of kids when they're doing this and they try and do this quick trick, 
they leave out your middle term and you end up with a horrible sum which you can't solve. If you're going to do that, rather do this. There is no shame in it. And quite candidly, I would rather, again, maths is all about accuracy. I'd rather you just take the extra time, do this until you get to grips with it perfectly, and then you can start taking some shortcuts. So it's 2x plus 40. Now what are we going to do? We're going to put everything onto the other side. So we've got 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x. And I'm going to group while I'm doing this. I'm going to take the 2x across now and that becomes minus 2x plus 16. And when I come, take that across it becomes minus 40. So that becomes x squared minus 10x. And 40 minus 16 I think is, what is 40 minus 16? I think it's 24. Okay, yes, it's 24. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of a brain tired today. So that's minus 24. And now we're looking for factors which when they add up, add up to 10, and when they multiply, give us 24. And we're looking for the factors of 24 that do that. So the factors of 24 are 1 and 24. They're never going to add up to 10. Okay, so we've got 2 and 12, possibly. And then we've got 6 and 4 possibly, and 3 and 8, hell no. So those are definitely out. So we're looking at 2 and 12 and 6 and 4. So now if we look at this, we want them to have opposite signs because that's a minus. So if we have minus 6 plus 4, that gives us nothing to do with 10. And if we've got 6 minus 4, that doesn't give us 10 either. So it's not that. So therefore it's going to be x and 2 and x and 10 and we want the larger one, sorry 12, 12, we want the larger one to have the negative so it's going to be negative 12 plus 2. Therefore our possibility of x equals minus 2 or x equals 12. Now you will see that we've got two answers here. We always, always, always need to check our solution. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to raise this but here, so I've got space to write. And all you do to check is you just substitute in to make sure that you get the answer you're supposed to do. So luckily for us, whoopsie, let me go back. Luckily for us, we only have to substitute into the left hand side to see if we get minus 4. So let's do that. We've got root 2 times negative 2, okay, plus 40, minus minus 2. Okay, so if we get that, 2 times minus 2 is going to give me minus 4 plus 40 is root 36, root 36 plus 4, and 36, root 36 is 9, I mean 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. Hmm, that does not equal minus 4. Let us check the other number. So now we've got 2 times 12 plus 40 minus 12. Okay, so 2 times 12 is 144. So we've got, no, sorry, it's equal to 24 plus 40 minus 12, which becomes 24 plus 40 is 64. So it's root 64 minus 12. The root of 64 is 8. 8 minus 12 is equal to minus 4. So yay, that works. Therefore, this is not a solution. It does not work. And your x equals 12 works. So please understand that as soon as you get more than one solution, you need to start checking because when we square this, we actually manipulate this and then we can come up with an answer that is invalid. Let's look at our next example. Okay, I'm saying with red because it's easy. Okay, so now I know we said that when we're solving for x or y or z, we always try and get those numbers by themselves. But in this case, if you've got a p and a root p, we want to try and get this number by itself. But there's another way we can do this. And I want to show you this little trick. We can write this as p minus 4, p to the a half, plus 3 equals 0. Now here's a little trick where we're going to be using our k substitution we learned about earlier. If I let k equal p to the a half, do you agree that k squared is going to be p to the a half squared, which is just p? 
therefore, if I look at this, I can replace this with k squared, k squared, minus 4k plus 3. And there do you see that we have a beautiful trinomial, beautiful quadratic. So we can factorize this nice and easily. This becomes k minus 3, and that k becomes k minus 1, because 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. We want both the symbols to be the same. We want them to be a minus. Therefore, k minus 3 equals 0, or k minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, k equals 3, or k equals 1. Now, remember that that wasn't what they asked for. So they asked us for p, and p is k squared. So therefore, p is equal to k squared. Therefore, in this case, p is going to equal to 3 squared, which is 9, or p equals 1. And now again, we are not finished. We always have to check. So let's check it. We're going to substitute into this and see if we end up with 0. So we've got p minus 4 root p plus 3. So if we substitute in the 9, we've got 9 minus 4 times root 9 plus 3. So it becomes 9 minus 4 times 3 plus 3. So 9 minus 12 plus 3 equals 0. So yay, that number works. Let's try the p equals 1. So over here, we've got, maybe I should change colors so that you know what I'm doing. Let's just change this. So here we've got 1 for the p minus 4 times root 1 plus 3. So it becomes 1 minus 4 plus 3 which becomes 4 minus 4, which equals 0. So yay, they both work this time. Life is good. Okay, now let's do the next example. Okay, now this example, we are solving for the x. Okay, so we gain to, therefore, this time, take everything that's, because this is not a root or anything, we're going to take everything that's not with the x and take it to the other side. So I'm going to say 8 x is equal to 1 over cube root of 8. But now we need to use our knowledge of how to convert this into a rational exponent. So this becomes 1 over 8 to the third and that's 8 to the x. Now the other trick, do you see that this is 8 to the x and that's 8 to the third? So the ideal would be if this side could have the base of an 8 and if that side's got base 8 then basically the, if the base is the same then the exponents have to be equal to each other. So this is going to be 8 to the x. How could I rewrite this? Do you agree that if this is 1 over a to the third, okay, let me just write this over here. 1 over a squared is the same as what? It is a to the minus 2. Do you remember this rule? So now we are going to use that rule over here. So it becomes 8 to the minus 1 third. Now do you see that these two bases are the same? And only if you have one term on either side and the bases are the same, we can drop these bases and we can say therefore x equals minus one third. Ta-da! So that's a nice little trick. Right, grade 11s, you need to go and practice, practice, practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.